Hello everybody and welcome back to my rebranded channel where I give you high quality honest reviews and podcasts. In spite of my obsession with layer 1s, it's actually layer 2 that we are going to talk about today. It's going to be a lines block. We will talk about the team, the token, we will talk about the modules that this protocol consists of. We will talk about the white paper and of course, as usually, my personal criticism. I'd love to do this full time, but I won't be able to without your support. Make sure you subscribe, like and comment. And without further ado, let's dive into what Alliance Block actually is. So what is Alliance Block? Alliance Block is a blockchain agnostic layer 2 protocol consisted of multiple products called modules. The modules form first globally compliant yet decentralized capital market. The modules are interconnected yet able to operate independently. Some of these modules are trustless KYC module, peer-to-peer -peer lending, borrowing and investment protocol, DeFi terminal, alliance bridge or data tunnel. Each of these modules is powerful enough to be a standalone crypto project with a token of its own. We will talk about them in a chapter later. Before we get there, let's have a look at Alliance Blocks team. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the three co-founders of Alliance Block. Let's begin with Rashid Ajaja, who also is CEO. Rashid has extensive quantitative analyst background, four plus years in Barclay, which is a major British bank. In, a, in the last years before he started working for Alliance Block, he spent a year in Vinci, where he was researching stuff like the autonomous cars, AI, deep learning, and arguably that's also where his interest in blockchain started. Because if you connect to bank infrastructures, you need to be 100% secure that no one can hack you. Most of the, 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 the crypto companies, even if they have amazing products, they don't comply with the security rules that are the standard in the financial world. And this is why lots of products, they don't have this kind of adoption. Rashid keeps me motivated when he speaks, I believe in the project's vision. Our ambition is to build the ecosystem of ecosystems. So we are not here just for the blockchain space, but we are for the DeFi and also for the traditional. Now, Mathis De Vries is a second uh, co-founder of Alliance Block and a CTO, Chief Technology Officer. And as you might have expected, he has an extensive developer background, which is an excellent requisite for being a CTO. He has 15 plus years of experience, mainly from the Netherlands. During that time, he's built up some of his startups. I don't forget that uh, we started back in 2018. We started uh, in, in the middle of a bear market and uh, we went all the way through it. We are no mercy yet. We know what to, uh, what, what we can do with uh, little amounts of, uh, of, 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 of funding. We can, so. Even whatever happens, we know we know what to do with little resources if uh, if if necessary. Amber Gehadar is the last co-founder of Alliance Block and the last person we're going to talk about in this video. Similar to Rashid, she comes from a banking background and with impressive education and arguably very impressive connections. The end goal of a society is to reach a state of equilibrium. Till today, she is a lecturer and for a good reason because uh, apart from her impressive education and impressive connections, she uh, appears to have a talent for speech, being one of the best female speakers in a blockchain space I have seen. Well, well, what can I say? It's been a, an exciting year and we live in exciting times. It's because the fourth industrial revolution, especially automation and AI, is going to create a huge unemployment in our modern um, in our modern society. We never really recovered from the financial crisis of 2008. But history doesn't end. And it's time for you, for me, for us to make history again. And now let's have a chapter talking about the modules. Initially, there have been seven modules introduced with Alliance Block. Each of these products is good enough to be yet another small cryptocurrency 
with a token of its own. Let's start with a trustless KYC and anti-money laundering identity verification module. I am actually very elated to see that there is a module on Alliance Block that lets me to prove my identity in a trustless manner while I retain the control of my data. That's done through zero knowledge proof of validation. Access to the data re registry is controlled via a, a role-based access control mechanism that allows read-only access to the users. So essentially the institutions or exchanges or in fact any entities like governments uh, will know whether you are eligible or not eligible to use their products without having your identity. I think that's genius. And there are even more benefits such as right to be forgotten or conservation of power consumption or even more benefits than that. Pretty excited about this module. Let's have a look at the next. Peer-to-peer -peer lending protocol module uh, allows people to collateralize real-world assets. Even your old garage now can have a tokenized ownership. So yeah. Another module, Alliance Bridge. One bridge fits all. Let's user swap any token on any network that has been integrated into the protocol. It's open sourced and audited. Um, Alliance Block has partnered with uh, DAG, header hash graph, and they're using their consensus to optimize performance on Al of Alliance Bridge. There were three validators at first, with a planned extension to 11 validators at the end of 2021. But that didn't happen and there are still three validators today. Another module, Data Tunnel. Uh, it's a module described as an Oracle of Oracles. Alliance Block partnered with multiple oracles such as Chainlink, Parsec, Dia and others. It, it takes data from these oracles, enriches them and pushes it back to achieve a single source of truth. Data Tunnel is a place where anyone can publish and monetize data as well. Um, there is a partnership with Ocean Protocol to allow DEX for data. The marketplace for data is a first of its kind. So the next time when you create a data that nobody has, just make sure you know there is a place to monetize it. Now, some of the information about the modules that I've just presented to you were from the white paper. So I think we should talk about the white paper a little bit more. Alliance block is comprised of three layers. The first layer that I'm going to mention, it's data governance layer. That's where all the KYC and uh, eligibility statuses are. Thanks to this layer, the data DEX is possible. Then cross-border regulatory compliance layer, which allows compliance to be coded into the system for trustless regulatory processes. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Now let's move to the third layer. Securities issuance and lifecycle management layer. It takes traditional securities like non-bankable assets and other products and converts them into the digital assets. As you know, Alliance Block lets you collateralize any real world asset. Now Alliance Block uses proof of concept. What is proof of concept? Question mark. Proof of concept is a process of determining whether a blockchain idea can be feasible in a real world situation. And so the idea will function as envisioned. Um, the use cases in the white paper, they are not the functionalities of the Alliance Block token. Okay, don't mistake it for it. For instance, data traceability and tokenized token management. Essentially, content creators can tokenize their content with end-to-end -end visibility of the data used. Data traceability is a big deal in today's world, as you know. This is a good thing to mention, and especially today. Or, for instance, the use case of first truly compliant uh, open finance solution. All the investors' data is stored post-encrypted on the decentralized data registry of Alliance Block. We talked about it already. So you just do KYC once, and depending on where you are, which jurisdiction do you belong to, Get an access to those or these products. Let's also mention consolidated reporting of financial exposure for regulation use case. You know, stuff like compliance checks, consolidations, and even the reporting becomes easy thanks to the automation. 
And okay, I won't torture you anymore with a boring white paper. So let's have a look at the token, its functionality and everything about it. Alliance Block Token is a reserve currency of the Alliance Block Protocol. This is one of the most utility token in DeFi I have ever seen. Fees and rewards functionality. There is a node validator and staking functionality. It's used for governance. It's worth to mention that the token's utility will only ever increase like with the announcement of the 100 million Alliance Block incentivization program with BonQ. You can borrow against your cryptocurrencies and you can receive B Euro, which is a stablecoin pegged to the Euro. As for the market cap of the token and the total number of tokens in the circulation, both CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko have these numbers wrong. Uh, this sheet is directly from Alliance Block and here you can see that as of today, there is approximately 740 million tokens in circulation, which means that the market cap is somewhere below 40 million. What we also can see from the schedule is that over the past 12 months, there was over 500 million tokens released into the circulation, which is very aggressive and undoubtedly it affected the price downwards. I usually give you two areas. One area is very low area where I think that would be a very good and safe buy. And another area is the uh, sell area where I think that the token is going to go. As for the buy area, there can still be lower prices, even though we are on all time low. So that's why I'm designing this area between one to two point half cents. There is a very clear area that would be the sell area, guys. The only 5% chance that this area would not be hit in my opinion, would be if the development catastrophically goes down the road and stops. That was not a financial advice, it was merely my technical opinion on the price action of the token. And now let's have a look at the community. This was my second time I drafted a review for the corresponding community. Comparing Alliance's community to that of Sado, I have to admit that Sado was a little bit more active. I also asked the founders two questions and didn't get a response. Still, I found Alliance's community to be active and it provided me with good feedback, with some general feedback related to the reviews. In order to make my reviews more accessible and less lengthy, I'm going to split my videos into 5 minute chunks so they can be released on an individual basis. I will call these chunks clips. Considering Alliance's social media channels, it's safe to say that their presence does not seem too promotional nor commercial. Matis and Rachid, the founders, are active on Telegram. Yet, as I've mentioned already, I'm disappointed that they didn't react to my drafted review and my questions. That was my take on Alliance's community, and now let's have a look at what I have to say about the criticism. I came across fiscal and monetary policy section in the Tokenomics white paper. It says that one of the main tasks of Alliance block is to behave as a central bank of the ecosystem and maintain healthy growth of the user base and the token stable price appreciation. Token stable price appreciation, I quote again. We want to focus on the following aspects of the network stimulation. Decreasing the token volatility using buybacks, when the price is decreasing or selling the tokens when the price is overperforming in an unnatural way. These buybacks are not documented or discussed at all, it seems. My questions or telegram about the matter remained unanswered. Also, the tokenomics says specifically, we are designing a currency. I believe it is not possible to have a currency that has capped max supply. In time, all the supply would end up in one player's hand. Like the ending of the Monopoly board game. The game ends when players have no mean to pair their debts to the winner, because the winner controls all the money supply. I usually don't follow DeFi because I think it's little too many fishes in one pond, but if there is one DeFi that truly interconnects the traditional finance and the decentralized finance, then it's Alliance Block.
there is a real community of people that are helping one another, that want to help one another, and that are leveraging on the knowledge, on the experience of each other to make better decisions.